Can you imagine Star Wars without the Millennium Falcon? Hells no. Space battles are a major part of the Star Wars universe. And let's be honest, they're some of the best things about the movies. Where would Episode 4 be without the trench run? Where would Episode 6 be without the Death Star 2 battle? I mean, space battles have always been awesome. Which leads into today's archive about the ships of the Galactic Empire and the Rebel Alliance. We're just going to discuss the main starfighters. And of course we're going to start with the Empire and its Imperial TIE Fighter. TIE stands for Twin Ion Engines due to it having twin ion engines. The TIE Fighter was a short-range starfighter modeled after ships from the Old Republic era. The twin engines helped the TIE Fighters have enough thrust and booster power to be able to turn in directions extremely fast, but this came at the cost of deflector shields and hyperdrives, both of which is very beneficial, especially when your adversary has both of those. The power drain with those additions would have been way too high for the TIE Fighters. The wings on a TIE Fighter are solar collectors that powered the laser cannon and engines. The fighters included ejector seats, a homing beacon in case of theft. Who's going to steal a freaking TIE fighter? Oh yeah, the rebels seemed to do that quite a bit. But it also featured an itty bitty cockpit space that could only fit one pilot. And it's pretty cramped in there if you wanted to fit anyone else. Had flight controls, view scans, targeting and tracking systems, and they could also feature a proton torpedo to add to the laser cannons. TIEs were favored for their speed and maneuverability and were used as the main patrol and security dogfighter for the Empire. Now let's shift over to the TIE's direct competitor, the T-65B X-Wing, or better known as the X-Wing. The X-Wing, while not as maneuverable as its TIE adversary, was still pretty darn close. They had two pairs of strike foils that folded out during combat to give it its X shape. On the tip of each of the four wings were the main laser cannons. The X-Wings also featured proton torpedo launchers. Unlike its TIE adversary, the X-Wing featured both a deflector shield and a long-range hyperdrive. The X-Wing systems included a sensor system, targeting computer, and a spot for an astromech droid to run repairs and calculations. The X-Wings had it all. The X-Wing was designed for a single pilot as well, under a transparent steel canopy. Between these two, the favor goes towards the Rebel Alliance's X-Wing, which has the advantage due to the deflector shield, ability to repair, and the extra firepower. Even though it's not as maneuverable as a TIE fighter, it's still pretty damn close, and the TIE is lacking for way more than it makes up for. Now let's switch over to the real dogfighters of the Starfleets, the Interceptors. And of course we're going to start with the TIE Interceptor first, keeping with the theme of the first one, the Empire's dogfighting prize ship. The Interceptor was faster than the TIE Fighter and had double the firepower with four laser cannons on the wingtips. Why does that sound so familiar? The Interceptors also featured only the most elite of the Empire's pilots and came about when the Empire realized that the TIE X-1 would be too costly to mass produce. By the Battle of Endor, the Interceptors made up 20% of the Empire's fleet as they were built specifically for chasing down and eliminating rebel ships. Like the TIE Fighter, it did not feature shields and a hyperdrive and the Interceptor did not feature torpedoes either. The Interceptor's main adversary from the Rebel Alliance was the A-Wing Interceptor. A strike fighter modeled after the Clone Wars Starfighters, this ship featured a hyperdrive, two laser cannons, and 12 concussion missiles. A-Wings favored speed over protection, stripped of its shields, armor, and heavy weapons. The sacrifice allowed for the A-Wing to go faster than its TIE Interceptor adversary, if only by 50 km per hour. Once again, I'm going to have to give it to the Rebel Alliance. It proves to have a better Interceptor fighting ship. The A-Wing is faster and comes equipped with a hyperdrive and concussion missiles, making the advantage go once again to the Rebels. Time to go over the main bombers of the fleet starting with the Empire's TIE Bomber. Being bomber craft and carrying heavy loads, the bombers were of course not going to be fast. Like the rest of the TIE fleet, bombers did not come equipped with a hyperdrive, but their armament was pretty damn impressive. They came with concussion missiles, two laser cannons, orbital mines, and proton bombs. The bombers could hold up to six passengers. The main bomber of the rebellion, the Y-Wing, was again equipped with a hyperdrive, deflector shield, targeting systems, and was equipped with two laser cannons and ion cannons on a rotating turret on top of the ship. The Y-Wing also carried torpedo launchers and could fit one pilot, a gunner, and an astromech. The Y-Wings were used back in the Clone Wars during several battles, including the Battle of Ryloth and the Battle of Geonosis. Out of all these fighters, this one is probably the closest one for me to call. Both ships are very impressive in their own ways, and there's no clear winner for this one, to be honest. The Y-Wings had deflector shields and survivability with the ability to have an astromech once again. But the TIE Bombers were also impressive because, as a bomber craft, they had a little bit more of an armament. So, which do you go with? The survivability of the Y-Wing, which is still a bomber, 
or do you go with the full-on attack of the TIE Bomber, who had a way better armament? To be honest, I'm personally going to go with the Rebel aircraft, the Y-Wing, because it still performed its job while making sure the pilots stayed alive, versus the TIE Bomber could easily be shot down when engaged, but that one is I'm going to call that one a draw, because to be honest, they both serve their functions just in different ways. That's it for this archive on the main starfighters for the Rebel Alliance and the Galactic Empire. That kind of turned more into a versus series with ships than it did an archive. But whatever. It's cool. The info was still there. I left out the info of the manufacturers and stuff like that because, frankly, it doesn't really matter who the manufacturers are, and that's kind of just fluff information. And to keep the format of all the other videos, uh, I just mentioned the important aspects, and I leave the fluff stuff to you guys. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and maybe next time the Empire should build a planet-destroying machine on the ground, because the Rebels definitely smack them around in the air. Make sure to check out my other content on the screen here, and we're almost at 100 subscribers, so it's about time to get ready for that Rogue One movie giveaway, isn't it, guys? Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.